In addition to being a partner in Techies, I own a small manufacturing operation where we produce this air clutch brake. For this case study, I'd like to focus on the output shaft. Before I go on, though, I'd like to thank John Rivers of Rivers Precision. John made the majority of the video that you're going to see and is an outstanding machinist, inspector, and all-around good guy and good friend. Here's an exploded view of the air clutch brake. In this assembly I have an input shaft which is actually a casting that gets machined and this rides in two bearings and I have an output shaft that we're going to be talking about and it also rides in two bearings. This clutch and brake disc slides along the spline on this shaft. So in operation as the shaft is rotating we're able to move this disc back and forth to engage the clutch face or to put the brakes on. On the drawing we've identified the two diameters that are going to have bearings pressed on them as our datum features. Datum feature A is this one and datum feature B is this one. You'll notice that I have total runout on these features relative to A-B. A lot of people look at that and say, you can't have runout to itself. Well, it's not to itself. As you'll see, A-B establishes a common datum axis, and then we want to check the runout of these surfaces relative to that axis, and you'll see John doing that. The reason we picked out those two features is because we do press this ball bearing onto datum feature A and we press the race of a needle bearing onto datum feature B. So these features really are the ones that locate and orient this in its assembly. I'd like to point out that there are some optional centers here that our supplier uses to grind these shafts. Here's a perfect output shaft. Unfortunately parts is parts and as we go through the manufacturing process and especially the heat treating process for this shaft we find that our shafts get somewhat distorted. So here I'm showing you an exaggeration of the distortion or the bowing that we see in the shafts. The shop would like me to call out the bench centers as the datum features because that's how they manufacture the part. If I do that though that's not going to really represent how the part will act in its assembly. As we rotate this part because of the bowing you'll see that these journals move quite a bit. And so this part would be rejected if I were to pick the shaft up by the centers. Picking the part up or setting it up off datum feature A would result in an axis along this line. If I picked it up on datum feature B I'd get this axis and neither one of those really represents how the part works. There is actually a common axis that is established by the bearings once this assembly is put into the air clutch brake. I need for the spline to run very true to that common axis. I can afford to have more tolerance out here on the end of the shaft because the end of the shaft will either have a V pulley or a flex coupling both robust enough to deal with a little bit of run out here. But if this spline is running out too much it will cause problems with our clutch and brake faces. So as I rotate this you notice that the end is running out but the spline stays fairly true. Looking again at the drawing then, A is this diameter, datum feature B is this diameter, we say A-B which is established as a common axis, then I have tight total runout tolerance to make sure that these two surfaces are looking at one another, a little bit looser tolerance on the spline relative to that common axis A-B, and then the other features on this part not as critical so they'll use this circular run out of four thousandths tolerance which would include the end of the shaft. As we look at the video we're going to see that John will take the part and put it on a lathe with a precise spindle. Using a four jaw chuck and indicators John will be able to align the part to the spindle axis. The spindle axis is serving as our datum axis. Remember, datums exist in our processing equipment, or at least simulated datums do. 
I'll let John take it from here. Today we are going to attempt to mechanically check the uh, dual runout of this output shaft. This output shaft has two diameters. This diameter is datum A and this one is datum B. And the goal is to mechanically check uh, the, uh, the dual runout of these two features. I've set it up here in this Harding lathe that has a very super precise spindle in it. And we're rotating the part and we are going to attempt to indicate datums A and B to run true at the extreme ends. We'll do it at this end on datum A and on this end of datum B and then we will come and check to see how much runout we have in the uh, remainder of the, uh, the features. From uh, checking this earlier between centers we found that the shaft does have a severe bow in it and that's probably due to heat treating uh, that got deformed. So we'll uh, go through this little exercise here and see what happens. First of all I'm indicating this in on this end of datum A. We've got this electronic indicator that is set up for each division to be one ten thousandths of an inch. The uh, indicator is capable of measuring down to five millionths per division so we can get really fine if we uh, chose to, but for this uh, we have to stay with a coarseness of about one-tenth per division. Now as I'm rotating it in the spindle here indicating as best I can in this four jaw chuck for this end, I'm getting about oh, a good strong one ten thousandths total run out. And we checked this part earlier in the more universal measuring machine we found the same thing that due to the uh, heat treating it is not perfectly round. So we indicated as best we can there at that end. We'll come back to the datum A feature in a little bit. But first, but next we'll go over to datum B. And we'll check the end of it here as we got it to run true. We have to make it a little bit coarser to speed up the indicating process here. go back to the uh, one-tenth per division and we will re-zero re the indicator. The part has some scratches in it which makes it even a little more difficult to indicate. Well, that's not one-tenth, that's ten millionths per division. That's why we're getting so wild here. Now we're down to the one-tenth per division. Okay, so I'll zero this out right here, and we're getting a good good tenth and a half run out. And that's about the best we can we can do on this. It depends exactly where you check. You can move just slightly, and you'll get even a different uh, condition. And that's what our more universal me measuring machine told us as well. So we're not surprised that it's difficult to indicate this in because of the out around feature. So I move down on datums B. I'll make sure we're at the null point of the indicator. So we come down here. Well, we're getting well, a good three tenths for sure, a total run out. We will now come back over to the datum A and reinterrogate that. Back of the one tenth per division, come down here to the end. zero that in. We're back to that about good strong one-tenth run out. Now we'll move down towards the center, get up closer to this end. And as we look at this, I'll zero it at the highest point. 
of the run out. Here we're getting a good strong eight ten thousandths of an inch run out at that point. And I mark this with a red marker here as to where the high point is for future reference. When I had this set up between centers from this point to that point, I think we got about a six thousandths run out. So the, the shaft is severely warped. But our goal here is to check the run out of features A and B. So that's what we're seeing there, a good eight tenths. We come back over to the other end and we're, we're right within that one tenth again. So that is our experiment uh, to mechanically check the run out of those two features. And I will set this up between centers and uh, recheck some, some more things just to kind of uh, compare some of the things we're finding here.